take a little bit of time to introduce our keynote speaker. Throughout his distinguished career in public service as mayor, state senator, and the governor of Iowa, Tom Vilsack has a remarkable record of making positive change in the lives of those he has served. Already as the 30th Secretary of the United States Department of Agriculture, Secretary Vilsack has worked to turn around the economy and put Americans back to work. In the past two years, USDA supported struggling farmers and ranchers, provided food aid to one in four Americans, and implemented the Recovery Act to create jobs and build a foundation for future economic growth. Under his leadership, the USDA is working to conserve America's forests and private working lands and to clean our water supply. At home, USDA is strengthening the American agricultural economy and promoting agricultural production and exports. Globally, they are working together to combat hunger and help individuals grow the food that they need. President Obama and Secretary Vilsack are committed to improving the health of America's children by providing them nutritious and balanced meals and improving our food safety, safety system. And Secretary Vilsack's USDA is implementing new strategies to revitalize America's rural economies so they have a thriving economy and growing population. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me with great honor in welcoming one of the greatest proponents on breaking our dependence on foreign oil, utilizing homegrown fuels grown in Iowa and other states around the country, while understanding his commitment to both feeding and fueling the world. Starting right here in Shenandoah, Iowa, I would like to welcome Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it is great to be back uh, in Shenandoah and great to be back in, in the state of Iowa. Uh, I, I hope you folks will permit me one personal comment here. I know you look cold. Hey, Tim, can you? Can you? <laughs> I was, uh, I was in a Senate hearing earlier this week, and I was called up to the Hill, and the purpose of the, of the, of the uh, hearing was to talk about uh, biofuels and renewable energy, uh, and specifically the concern of some of the senators about whether or not it made sense for this country of ours to continue to invest in ethanol, to continue to invest in renewable fuels and energy. Uh, and as my good friend Tom Bias is here from Growth Energy, he was in the audience and, and he was uh, sitting behind me. And several of the senators asked questions about, um, you know, is it, is it accurate to say that food costs are going up because of ethanol production? And I would say, no, it's not accurate to say that because uh, the farmers only get 16 cents of every food dollar to begin with. The other 84 cents goes somewhere else and it goes to folks who package and process and refrigerate and shelve and store, and all of those folks have something in common, and that is that they rely to a great extent on oil and energy. And when oil costs go up, it is reflected in food prices. It's not an issue with ethanol. Ethanol is a very, very small percentage of any uh, food dollar. Uh, is it true that, that we're not capable in the United States of America uh, to be able to grow enough to be able to meet our fuel needs and our food needs and our feed needs. And I was trying to suggest to these good senators that that's the wrong set of questions to ask. I am a great believer in American ingenuity and I'm a great believer in the capacity of the American farmer and rancher to literally meet any challenge. And so I went through this process and in about an hour they kind of shoveled me out of the, out of the way and put another panel in there that wasn't particularly supportive of, of, of ethanol. And it was unfortunate because there was a senator from Rhode Island who showed up late to the hearing uh, and he didn't get a chance to ask me any questions. As I'm walking out the, uh, of the hearing, he starts talking about Shenandoah, Iowa. And I thought, you know, I really ought to have been there to talk about Shenandoah, Iowa because I'm the only person in that whole audience that actually been to Shenandoah. Uh, and knew where it was and knew, knew what, uh, what good folks are doing in Shenandoah. But, uh, but he was very keen on what's happening here. And, and this is really what it is all about. This is why I am so optimistic about the future of this country and the future of rural America. And what's happening here, as uh, Secretary Northern and I were just talking about this, what a tremendous opportunity, particularly for the young people who are here, for the FFA uh, folks who are here. You realize that this is not happening 
anywhere in the world. It's happening right here in your home state, in a small town in rural America. And it's going to continue to happen all across this country in rural communities. But there's phenomenal innovation and phenomenal growth opportunity to be able to do something for your country that needs to be done, and that is to wean ourselves off of our dependence on foreign oil. It's an opportunity for us to create jobs in small towns, as Greg Connell has been working uh, for a good part of his adult life uh, to, to have happen here. It's an opportunity for American agriculture to continue to respond to the challenges that it has met time after time after time in this country. The rural parts of our country are extraordinarily important. Uh, it is not only the source of our food and most of our water and most of our and, and an ever increasing amount of our fuel. Sixteen percent of the country's population comes from these parts, towns like Shenandoah. Forty-four percent of the military comes from those same towns, or those same areas. And it isn't because these young people are leaving uh, for other opportunities. It's because they are taught something very, very basic in living in a town like this. What they are taught is that you can't keep taking from the land. Every farm in this audience knows you've got to give something back. You, you, you've got to give something back to the land in order for it to be able to produce for you. Well, country's no different. And in order for us to continue to give back to the country, we need to have bright men, men and women growing up in this environment, growing up to understand that very basic concept. And the only way we can do that is if we have economic opportunities so as they graduate from the Iowa States and from the small colleges across this great state, they don't have to look very far for economic opportunity. They don't have to look very far for cutting edge, innovative technologies. That's what this represents. This is actually far more, with due respect to this company, this far more than just the opportunity of a lifetime to take CO2 from an ethanol production facility and use it to produce algae and have algae produce byproducts that we use uh, in our homes uh, and in our businesses. This is about revitalizing the rural economy, creating phenomenal opportunity for young people who want to live and raise their families here, but for far too long have not had the economic opportunity to do so. That's why I'm here today, because this project, the bioprocessing algae process, has four components that are the secret of success in revitalizing the rural economy. First, there is obviously significant investment in this facility. And it's going to be important for us to continue to look for ways to bring capital into the United States, into the rural parts of this country. You do this by focusing on the second component, which is innovation. The ability to figure this all out, and when you see this, it's really remarkable what they're doing. To figure it out and to be on the cutting edge of innovation, that's what attracts investment. It's also about networking. It's not just one company, it's multiple companies working together, and it's also multiple industries. It is not the false debate that sometimes takes place between advanced biofuels and ethanol. It's a marriage of the two. Uh, and this is great because we've got 400 facilities across the country that are producing ethanol and biodiesel. We want those kinds of marriages. We want that kind of opportunity to expand. And so it's about networks. And it's about a sense of place. Uh, Folks who understand agriculture and who celebrate agriculture and who live agriculture and who are not afraid to embrace new agriculture. Secretary Gordy and I uh, are, are, I think it's fair to say, we're good friends. And I think we share the same vision for agriculture, uh, and that is that it continues to provide diverse opportunities. And this is certainly a remarkable opportunity it's going to create in Iowa. And it obviously is getting the attention of people all across the country. And frankly, it'll get the attention of people all across the world. Two years ago, when we started on this journey, uh, we were importing about 60% of our oil from foreign lands. And as it was I mentioned earlier, some of these folks don't necessarily agree with us, all like us. Today, we're down to 52%. And one of the reasons we're down to 52% is we're producing more biofuel. And I appreciate the fact that there are some who, who have some concerns about that, but for me, reaching the 36 billion gallon threshold that Congress has set is an absolute imperative for this country. 
It's an imperative because it is a linchpin to revitalizing the global economy. It's a linchpin to letting these bright young people know that there's opportunity for them. And there's a reason why they're working hard in school, going to a place like Iowa State, uh, becoming well educated and coming back home and being able to grow the economy. Uh, this is a, a, a remarkable project. I, I am just so pleased Christy and I had a chance to see this. Uh, I don't quite understand it totally, but it's, uh, it's really neat to look at. Because <laughs> I'm not a scientist. Uh, but I can see opportunity. Uh, and I think it's wonderful that it's happening in Western Iowa. Uh, I think there's a tremendous opportunity here uh, because of the innovation and the networks. And it's one of the reasons why the USDA has invested in a multiple county region in Southwest Iowa in our Great Regions Initiative. And I'll close with this. We understand that there is a, a, a willingness on the part of counties within Southwest Iowa to work together, not to work against each other or to compete with each other. Recognize that we are in an economic region here in the southwestern part of the state. Uh, banding together and leveraging resources and brain power, the, 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 the possibilities are unlimited. You're going to see how unlimited they are in just a few minutes. And so we've invested in seven great regions initiatives across the country, one of them in southwest Iowa. And we're investing here because we believe that this area of Iowa has figured out how to merge innovation and investment and networking in a sense of place in revitalizing the economy and making the case for bright young people that they have opportunity. So I want to, I want to congratulate the folks at the Bioprocessing Algae uh, Facility. I want to congratulate the, the, the ethanol industry and the advanced biofuel industry coming together in this operation because it's a model for the rest of the country. And it sends a strong and unmistakable message that the ethanol industry and the biofuel industry is here to stay. It's going to play an important role in shaping not just a great uh, opportunity for America, but very specifically a wonderful opportunity, an unlimited opportunity for the bright young people who want to live, work, and raise their family in what I believe to be the greatest part of America, and that's Georgia. Thank you very much.